How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Sunday Night Heat, episode number three on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. The show where myself, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, discusses and rants about trending topics in the WWE. You can follow the show on Twitter and join in on the discussion by tweeting at TSNA Show and using the official hashtag TSNH. You can follow the podcast itself on Twitter at No Holds Bar WP, as well as listen to us on all of our outlets, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, and Stitcher. We are everywhere and easier and convenient for you to listen to us, guys. Welcome to the show. Today's topic is titled, I've, re- I've renamed it actually, The Rise and Fall of T and A. Yes, total nonstop action, slowly, slowly creeping towards the grave, as many of you heard in recent news, um, which we'll get into in the show. And just crazy, man, how this this company has gone from back when it was like part of the NWA promotion, then it became its own thing. And I used to like TNA. I used, you know, don't get me wrong. Back in like 2004, 2006, I casually watched TNA here and there. It was fun. It, 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 had, it was its own thing. It was entertaining. And as we'll get into in the show, it just became, you know, down, down the drain crap. Um, so yeah, this episode guys, rise and fall of TNA. So before we get into anything, let's, you know, let's, let's go over the backstory of TNA and it, where I think it all went wrong for total nonstop action and basically how the fall came for TNA. So there's a couple rises in there, but I think the starting point for all this, and if we started from the beginning, like the first lightning strike was when Hulk Hogan joined TNA. So this is like the 2010 the year that is all happened. When Hulk Hogan joined, don't get me wrong, Hulk Hogan, unreal in the WWE, he's done wonders. But when he joined TNA, uh, even me at that time going, oof, like it, this is not right. Like this doesn't feel, I don't know if they're trying to get it boosted. I don't know if this is the way. Also joining him was Eric Bischoff, uh, Ric Flair. I remember our Van, Rob Van Dam, Ken Kennedy at the time, now Mr. Anderson, and Jeff Hardy. They all joined TNA in 2010. Um, so I think that's that. It's, it's like the first lightning strike when WWE, when I know they they started started to take uh, like WWE talent here and there over the years before that. But the the big overhaul started in 2010. I think this is where it it became like, oh, like it, it, are they trying to copy WWE? Like they're they're, they're swaying away from becoming their own thing. So there are mixed reactions to this. Um, some saying TNA could finally compete with WWE, and, and then there are others that said it would ruin the company. This is also the same year that the six-sided ring died. If any of you guys remember, TNA had a six-sided wrestling ring. They're all, basically the only company to ever do that. Um, there are lots of fans that are very upset when they got rid of the six-sided ring and went to the four-sided ring, as, as I was just saying. Swain more to try to be like WWE when they should be being their own thing. Um, that I know that only lasted uh, until 2014. And then they uh, got fans voted back for the six-sided ring. But move on from there. On February 15th, 2010, TNA made a new deal with Spike TV, which moved them from or which moved them to Monday Night in basically opposite of Monday Night Raw. Um, so they trying to compete with Monday Night Raw by moving to the Monday uh, night time slot. This didn't last long, though. On May 3rd, 2010, TNA moved back to Thursday and branded it TNA Thursdays. So they made Thursday nights their own thing. Um, I think solely after that, uh, WWE made SmackDown on Thursdays, which kind of like sucked for TNA because it's like <laughs> they wanted Thursdays to be the day people tuned in for TNA wrestling on Thursdays and you know just tune in on Monday and Fridays for uh, Raw and SmackDown at the time. Um, year later on May 3rd, 2011, TNA impact rebranded to impact wrestling. Um, there are people that became very confused on that situation and what to even call it. Like, are they still going to call it TNA or should we just call it impact wrestling? They later clarified it was basically just like WWE. WWE is the company. Monday Night Raw is the show. TNA is the company and impact wrestling is the show. So that was, uh, clarified. Moving on, another year later after that, on May 31st, 2012, Impact began airing live at the start time of 8 p.m. on Thursday. So this was a huge, huge deal for TNA going live instead of being pre-taped. Uh, many felt this could help with the ratings, but only lasted about a month and a half because on July 11th, 2012, DirecTV, the carrier of Spike, blocked all 
uh, if I can say, their Viacom stations affecting TNA viewership from all DirecTV subscribers, which is basically uh, a good overhaul of the states with DirecTV. Um, this took a dramatic toll in the ratings for TNA and took a big hit. But on July 20th, basically a week and a, I guess like a week later, almost reached a new deal after people many thought that it could be the end of TNA, but uh, it did they did lose a lot of viewership in that week long span. Um, so that took a big toll on TNA then. And you know what? Uh, even with the current proc it had at that time, it still wasn't helping that the, the viewership was going down. I mean, the product on TV wasn't that great either at that time. I couldn't remember any highlights from 2012, to be honest, from TNA. Um, in March 2013, so about oh, almost a year later, TNA officially terminates its least with universal studios so if you remember back in like 2006 era of tna they had the double tunnel in that small kind of space that was universal studio so it lasted until 2013 they terminated the deal and on march 14th of 2013 tna introduced a brand new universal hd stage uh many fans loved the universal studios and felt tna lost sentimental value when terminating the least with uh the original set um, you know, I kind of agree. If you guys don't remember, that was the actual same stage that WCW had that little spinning ring back in the day. Um, so, you know, I, I do agree that it did lose sentimental value when they, they switched it up again and something else. They're, they're just switching things in the company that they didn't need to do. Just it added more to the fall of, this, of TNA. Um, so throughout 2013, 2014, many well-known names and veterans left, started leaving TNA due to lack of direction. Um, one of them was Hulk Hogan. He did not renew in 2013 and left back to the WWE in 2014, if you guys do remember when he finally returned to host WrestleMania 30. Um, later on in December of 2013, AJ Styles officially leaves TNA after his contract expires due to uh, his new contract being offered to him would be a 60% pay cut. So he didn't like it. So he shipped off. And as we know, he went over to uh, the Indies in Japan and uh, became a member of the Bullet Club. In the same month, longtime veteran Jeff Jarrett resigned from TNA. TNA did accept his recognition, but instructed Jarrett that he would still be an investor in the company enlisted as an investor. Jared then went on to pursue and making his own promotion, Global Force Wrestling. So he, again, just losing two or three, three. Well, I mean, he could co- include Hulk Hogan as a veteran. I mean, he did kind of do something for TNA, but AJ Styles and Jeff Jarrett, huge losses for TNA then. Um, so you can see the the, ro- the 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 roller coaster, I guess you could say, slowly curving down and. Just, just more shit happening for TNA. And then we get into 2014. We also saw veteran Sting, Chris Saban, Hernandez, Christopher Daniels, and Kazarian leave the company. So huge losses there. They're basically the heart of TNA, a bunch of those guys. Then we also get Bully Ray and Devon leaving after contracts expired in 20, October 2014. And we're moved to the alumni section of the roster beginning January 2015. And we all know what happened after that. Later on, they came back and joined WWE as the Dudley Boys. Um, back in August of 2014, TNA moved from Thursday to Wednesday night. So they and moved. So they gone from Thursdays to Mondays and back to Thursdays and now back to Wednesdays. I mean, that's a lot of moving around for a TV show. I mean, I know SmackDown's done that in the past, but look at Raw. Raw's always been on the Monday and it's so hard. I mean, you could say Monday they have a lot to compete with on a Monday, Monday Night Raw. I mean, they could compete with Monday Night Football. It could be a really good game, and they do. Sometimes they get really bad viewership ratings when a good Monday Night Football game's on. So TNA trying to figure out which day they, to be more successful on really didn't, I don't think, help the company at all. And on August 20th, 2014, TNA announced it signed in an extension with Spike TV until the end of 2014. Um, I think that was around that time where many people thought they were going to be canceled by Spike TV, and then those rumors were false. So on November 19th, 2014, TNA announced that its relationship with was ending with uh, Spike TV and that it would instead be partnered with a new company called Discover Communications and be shown on the program Destination America. Um, this was a dramatic impact, I guess, pun intended there, uh, going from 97 million viewers 
in our home viewers to 59 million. So that's a big loss right there if you think about it. 97 to 59. I mean, you're still getting a lot of viewers, but not as much as you would on Spike TV. So going from Spike TV to Destination America, which I don't even know what the hell that is. I mean, I'm Canadian, so obviously I don't know, but I don't know if it's like a growing station or, or whatnot. Um, you guys can let me know if you, if you do know what that is. Um, so yeah, definitely going from a, a high popular uh tv brand like spike tv to uh destination america really didn't help then from december 2014 to march 2015 several employees re-signed with tna so there's some sort of light at the end of the tunnel there kurt angle re-signed jeff hardy uh gail kim ken kennedy abyss and matt hardy all re-signed with tna um so there's a little bit of a glimpse of uh, light at the end of the tunnel there although at this time, veteran Samoa Joe and commentator Taz left the company by mutual consent. We all know what happened with Samoa Joe. He ends up coming to NXT this past year, and as well as Taz, who now has his own podcast and is doing his own thing. So good for them. Uh, it was good. It was a mutual thing. So nothing uh, bad on terms between TNA and those guys. Um Discovery Communications announces on April fifth, an, an April twenty fifteen that it has received its best first quarter ratings due to TNA. So again, some slightly good news going on there. Um, TNA doing wonders for Des- uh, Discovery Communications, and um, just just from the first quarter quarter earnings is all because of TNA. So you know, some more light at the end of the tunnel there. Now we get into this chapter, of the story titled the beginning of the potential end um on april 27th 2015 it was announced that smashing pumpkins frontman billy corgan has joined tna as a senior producer of creative and talent development so uh billy corgan as you if you're a smashing smashing pumpkins fan you know he's from that band and now is a senior producer of, of creative and talent development in tna in May of that year as well, DC dropped TNA uh, sideshows unlocked in greatest matches. Um, so it almost like a ripple effect there. As you can see, Billy Corgan did bring uh, some sort of ripple with him as after he signed. They dropped the two sideshows um, unlocked in greatest matches. Um Later on in 2015, November 19th to be exact, it was the end of Discovery Communications. TNA announces a new deal, though, with Pop TV. They are an NBC uh, production company and would begin uh, airing on uh, Pop TV in 2016. It was also announced that it was debuting a new logo, a new set, and a new theme song. So a fresh look, as you can see now, the new Impact logo, the one now is when it debuted at the beginning of 2016 on Pop TV. Um... This is the same time that the, we got the debut of EC3 in TNA, Mike Bennett alongside Maria Kanellis. If you guys remember, former uh, WWE diva Maria Kanellis, now with uh, current boyfriend Mike Bennett. Uh, they were touring around our ROH for a long time, then they get signed with uh, TNA. Um, but this also saw the loss of Kurt Angle. He officially ended his TNA contract. And now, as we know, he is currently in the indie scene uh, doing various matches. And it looks like his career is coming to an end soon as well. Um, also in, uh, earlier this year, on March 19th, Eric Young and Bobby Roode leave TNA after being with TNA for the last 12 years. As we know now, they're both in NXT and both doing wonders. Bobby Roode is popular as all, as, as all hell right now. And Eric Young with his new group, Sanity. So really cool. Um, good for them. I mean, they weren't getting any direction and any uh, going anywhere in the future staying with TNA as it was slowly slipping down the hill. Um, also on April 22nd of this year, Velvet Sky left the TNA long time, uh, knockout of TNA. Um, so now we get into this past summer and this chapter of story where I have it titled the gun is loaded on August 12th, 2016 TNA announces Billy Corgan as the new promotions as the, the promotions, new president with Dixie Carter becoming the new chairman and chief strategy officer. Um, a lot of people were really, really pissed off about this. Like a lot of TNA fans, um, they felt like this was a really bad move because uh, they knew of Billy Corgan's intentions before that he wanted to sell the company. Um, on October 13th of this year, Billy Corgan, so this was like a, not even a couple days ago, Billy Corgan files a lawsuit against Impact Wrestling, uh, parent company Impact Ventures LLC, also TNA Chairman Dixie Carter, TNA Financial Officer Dean Broadhead, and Dixie Carter's husband Serge Salias in, uh, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Chensiri Court in Nashville. 
A temporary restraining order was approved and Billy Corbin filed a bond to support it. A hearing for a temporary conjunction has been scheduled for Thursday, October 20th at 1130 a.m. And Corgan has requested a six person jury to decide the case. So now that's basically almost putting all four out of five nails in the coffin it's basically almost done deal. And it was also announced recently uh, that three separate companies have come out and said TNA is $3.4 million in debt. So, yeah, I think we're going to see the end of TNA, guys. Uh, this was announced. It was all, and it's, it's really sketchy around this as well. There's some stories coming out that uh, this was announced on September 30th, uh, the Friday prior to Bound for Glory. So, it's it's put into question how the pay per view was even funded if they are $3.4 million in debt. Um, so it, it's, it's, well, people are wondering where the money hell was coming from. Like, where, where do they get this money to support that pay per view? So. That's the basically the rise and fall story of this episode of the Sunday Night Heat. So this is what I think is going to happen and what is, what is going to happen in the future of TNA. My honest opinion, guys, TNA will officially be closed at the end of this year. January 1st, 2017, we're not like that month. We're not seeing any more TNA. It's officially going to fold. That's going to be it. I mean, with the current court cases, we might even see it earlier. Um, I think Billy Corgan will continue to uh, venture in owning his own wrestling promotion, but I think it'll be something less, more or less successful, more like in uh, ROH kind of thing. Um, I think WWE will try to sign specific superstars they want for NXT and maybe their main roster. I don't think they're going to sign a, a, a that much because there's a lot of people over there that don't want to come back. Um, so let's speaking of that, let's just let's talk about who will make the jump, who I think will make the jump or jump and why. First off the bat, the obvious, I think the Hardys will make the jump to WWE with their broken gimmick. I think it's just it's very over right now. I think WWE sees how over it is. Their own fans are chanting delete at any time someone says the word delete or obsolete on TV. Um they know it'll get over in WWE and they know they can make money off it. So I think WWE sees dollar signs in this, in this whole gimmick. It's good for the Hardys to pursue it and to continue with it. Um, I think they can make a really good feud with the Wyatts right now. And uh, they could probably boost SmackDown live as well. If they were to go on SmackDown and, and feud with the Wyatts. So I think that would be a good haul for SmackDown itself. If, that we did pursue in getting the Hardys with the broken gimmick. Um, another person I think WWE will sign is Mike Bennett with Maria Kanellis. Um, it's I think they'd be good for NXT. Their, their whole uh, boyfriend and girlfriend gimmick and you know just stuff that they do. I've seen their work in ROH and I like it. I think it'd work well in, in NXT. Um, but I think Maria would love to come back to the WWE as well and maybe uh, venture into some you know a feud with. I don't know. I can't. I can't really think of anyone off the bat. But you know, maybe she can have some part-time feuds in the women's division to help boost it up as well. Start pu- putting people over. Another person I think Darby should go after, and it's really tough because of his personal history, um, is Moose. Um, I really like the guy. I think he'd be a huge signing. He is a great piece of talent. Um, his entrance alone would get him over. If you haven't seen Moose's entrance, guys, go look it up on YouTube. It's really cool. Um, so yeah. So those three. Those three individuals, well, you know, more than three, but those people I think WWE will look at the most. Some question marks, Cody Rhodes and Damien Sandow. Um, they recently left the WWE. Um, would they sign back now with the brand extension, though? Like, they, they can get more TV time and they'll get more opportunities. Who knows? So if the, if TNA were to fold, would Cody Rhodes and Damien Sandow come back? In my opinion, guys, I think they won't. I think they'll just pursue uh, rocking the indies for a while, maybe becoming top guys in ROH. I think, but I think they're really done with the WWE. Maybe we'll see something in the future, maybe like a one time, like a Royal Rumble appearance or something. But I think it's done for them. Uh, another question mark is Abyss. I would love to see him in a WWE. The feud with guys like Kane and Braun Strowman. You know, he'd be another big guy that I would love to see. He's still an excellent wrestler, but because of his age, he's 43 years old. If he did join, I think he would only be a part timer. We'd only see him here and there, uh, like the current Kane situation right now. Another question mark: Drew Galloway. Um, he was once labeled by Vince as the future. Um, I think he would do well in NXT. I don't know if he'd ever get a main roster call up, but I think he would do well in NXT for himself and be there to put some new talent over. I think he'd be great uh, for that brand. So, so let's get into some questions here. Um, I've been asked what could TNA have done to be more successful. 
Now you think about it and what I just said, I think the one thing they could have done starting in 2010 is not try to sign every WWE talent that gets away from WWE. I think they needed to be their own self. They needed to develop their own developmental system and get new faces and start rocking the indie scenes and looking for that because that's what WWE's done and they've become slightly popular because of the independent wrestlers they've signed. I think that's what they should have done instead of keep trying to sign every WWE guy that gets away and it just... It wasn't fun to watch. Like I think it really was boring. I think getting rid of the six sided ring was a, the worst idea imaginable. Um, they're trying again. They tried to compete with WWE by going to the four sided and trying to be more uh, modern wrestling when they could have just sticked with the six sided ring. I mean, it's it's not wrong. The fans love the six sided ring. It made TNA unique and it gave it sentimental value. Like I said before, um, so I think uh, the main thing is that they should have stayed away from signing every. Dirty B superstar that got away from Dirty B. I think that's really the main thing. And I think they shouldn't have let Billy Corgan even into the company. Um, it should have been just Dixie Carter the whole way. And oh, she's had her doubts and she's really bad with the management and money management. She just, I think it would have been, uh, you know, I think it would have been better if she stayed with the company and not hired anyone else to come in. So, that being said, should Dirty B buy TNA outright if there's a chance in the next couple of months? I think no. We have their video library now. I think we're good with that. We can start showing stuff in the network and start showcasing stuff like that. So, you know what? Let's just stay away from buying the entire company itself, Vince. You don't need to. They're not going anywhere. So, I really don't think that they really need to or should. So, let's get into your tweets, guys. I think that's going to end off the show with your Twitter. We can discuss your uh, Twitter responses. We'll start off with Gamma at Gamma NU1. He puts TNA owes three different money suppliers for paying for their shows, taxes to the state of Tennessee, and owe money to the fucking president. I'm just wondering at what point does Dixie realize she fucked the company because she can't be dumb and think TNA is stable. But signs point to her being that dumb. They should have just canceled the rest of the shows for the year because they can't pay anyone. And I don't know what the hell they thought they were doing with just adding more debt. Should have canceled and sold the video library and then Billy Corgan take full control of the company, rebrand it, and start fresh. But now I think TNA is fucked. All they can do at this point is go out of business and clear a place for Global Force Wrestling. (laughs) You know what? And that's going to end off Gamma's tweets. You know what? I honestly agree with everything you just said, Gamma. Um, Dixie Cutter definitely screwed up big time by letting in Billy Corgan, as I just said, too. Now, they owe diff- money to three different suppliers in, like, the t- state of Tennessee. Like, just all this shit that's coming out now is basically just May TNA put their hand on the gun and squeeze the trigger. Like, it's, it's literally about to fire off soon, and that's going to be the end. We're never going to see TNA again. Um, so... I do agree with you there, Gamma. Um, now, as in you saying, uh, Billy Corgan take full control of the company, rebrand to start fresh. Yes and no. I don't know if he would have been that good. I don't know how what's his knowledge in wrestling. Um, I think he could have his own company, but I don't think it'd be as big as TNA was. I think if he does rebrand Impact and make it his own, it's going to be something less, like I said, of an ROH and it'd be that big. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Ring of Honor is awesome. Like they've had, they've produced some great talent in the past, but you know what? They're not going to be um, as popular as the WWE. Um, getting into some more Twitter responses. We got uh, our our boy at Forlorn Irrelevance on Twitter. He puts, I feel once Dixie is out of the picture, Billy C will start to pick things up. He's smart and sounds like he knows the business. Yes, again, and I do, I do and don't agree with that. I don't know how much he knows. If you guys know more than me, then let me know. I don't know how much Billy Corey knows about a wrestling business and what it takes to, to be successful in this industry. So it'll be interesting to see what they do uh if Billy C does get the opportunity to have his own company. <laughs> so, I mean, the company owes $3.4 million in debt. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens. Next Twitter response comes from Michael Chow. He puts TNA was good at the beginning when owner Dixie Carter started to appear on television. Then I felt TNA started to go downhill. The owner to be part of the show worked for Vince, but it doesn't work here. I definitely agree with that. Um, I think Dixie Carter should have stayed off TV. I mean, Every time she was on TV, I cringe. It, like, it didn't fit. Again, they're trying to be like WWE. They, they tried to compete with WWE by trying to be like them, and it just didn't work whatsoever. It was wrong. They shouldn't have went that direction. And look, now they're about to fail big time. Michael Chow also puts TNA concentrated more on using their money to acquire talent. 
mostly all WWE release stars. Then again, like I said, then how expanded, then how to expand their company. While well, WWE is always cons- consistent, I can't read today, guys. While the WWE is constantly expanding with WWE Network, YouTube, new gimmick, pay-per-views, live house shows, NXT, etc. What has TNA done in the last couple of years that was different? The company always seems to be the same. Yes, I do agree with that to an extent, Michael Chell. They, they did bring the X Division, which is basically a labeled cruiserweight division. They also did uh, have the X Division match, which is, if you guys remember, it was almost like a Money in the Bank match. You had to go up and get the, the X at the top. Um, like TNA did provide us with some, some crazy shit in the past, but again, I agree with you. They Instead of expanding, they just stuck to the same crap that never worked. And it just They could have done some better things with TNA, and they didn't. They just didn't pull the trigger. Michael Chow also puts the future of TNA, in my opinion, is that the company will fold over like ECW. Several top talents like Style, Sting, Smojo, Rude, TJ Perkins, etc. have already made the jump to WWE. There's no need for the WWE to buy TNA when they only needed their video library, which they bought. And they can sign any talent they want and send to NXT, which they are already doing. Hashtag rest in peace, six-sided ring. And that's a shame. Um, at, and he's right there. They, they Look at all the talent they signed already from from TNA, it's going to be hard to see what who else they take. Um, you go to who I think would sign the company. You got Moose, uh, Maria Canales with Mike Bennett. Uh, the Hardys, I think, it would definitely be huge if there would be sign them back. Um, rest in peace, six sided ring. Yes, um, that'd be kind of cool if there would be brought a six sided ring style match to WWE. Um, maybe they made NXT just six sided ring. That'd be pretty cool. And they transition to a four sided ring. You know, can make it that kind of storyline. Um, so. Can you imagine that NXT as a six sided ring? That'd be crazy. I like my thoughts are just blowing up with the possibilities. So I don't know if they have to buy the ring from T from TNA. I don't know what, how that goes about, but uh, yeah, it's interesting. So thanks for your Twitter responses, guys. It, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to TNA in the future. Um, I, I really loved it back in the day. Like, don't get me wrong, I loved it. Um, Back when it was like 2004, 2006, I watched it religi- religiously when like Styles was the X Division champion. Like I loved that style of TNA. If they had stuck to that and like slightly expanded from that, I would have loved it. You know, be its own thing. But because they started signing former WWE talent and just started ruining and and making the brand boring, it just it didn't work. And they've basically dug themselves into the grave, and the grave is about to be buried from now on. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for the Sunday Night Heat episode number three the rise and fall of tna if you like this episode guys go hit that like button on youtube and listen to us and subscribe to us on all our outlets youtube soundcloud speaker stitcher and i think that's it everywhere we're everywhere for your enjoyment for easier and easier for you to listen to us i'm your host as always the self-proclaimed greatest host kyle masters and that's gonna do it